Just as in the last lecture, we want to make the point that performance matters in these implementations. Uh, all sorts of the applications we've considered involve huge, huge numbers of key value pairs. And uh, so we want to start by uh, specking a, a performance uh, requirement. So just as an example, let's look at a benchmark application, linguistic analysis. There's a thing called uh, Zipf's Law for natural language, for uh, a, a corpus or a, a huge text in a natural language. Uh, and this is a, a theory that uh, if the most frequent word occurs about t times in that text, then the second most frequent occurs about t over 2, and the third about t over 3, and so forth. Uh, so linguists are interested in testing that law in uh, real natural language text. So that's the goal. We want to validate that law. Well, we can use our frequency analysis program that we just considered as a symbol table client. Uh, but in order for that to complete for a huge text, we need an efficient symbol table implementation. So for example, here's the result of running this for Moby Dick, uh, which has uh, about a million words. Uh, and so uh, it, we have an efficient uh, implementation, but uh, that one's going to be difficult to do uh, unless you have uh, a good symbol table implementation. And actually, nowadays, people study much. Uh, it, this is a, a validation of Zipf's law for Moby Dick. It's not too far off. Uh, you can see the ob observation versus the uh, uh, hypothesis, uh, and it's, uh, it's pretty close. Uh, people actually uh, study this for uh, huge texts nowadays. Uh, so uh, there's a thing called, for example, the uh, Wortschatz corpus from the Leipzig project. Uh, and that one might have uh, uh, 20 million words, uh, maybe half a million of them uh, distinct. Uh, so, uh, and even nowadays, uh, if you look at texts on the web or uh, big sets of texts on the web, you might even have uh, billions. So uh, you're not going to be able to study these without an efficient symbol table implementation. So let's think about uh, the data structures that we've considered so far and see where we are. So one idea might be let's keep the keys in order in an array, keep the values in a parallel array. So if we have the index of the key, we have the index of the value, uh, and use it like we did in the, in the sorting and searching lecture. Uh, we have the fast sort, merge sort, and we have to remember whenever we move a key, we have to move the associated value. Uh, and we get fast search with binary search. Uh, but uh, there's one problem is how big do we make the array? Uh, so uh, we talked about that in the sorting and searching lecture. Uh, but there's really a fatal flaw in this, even if you address that one, is that how do you insert a new key? Uh, if you want to keep the key array in order when you get a new string, then you have to move the larger entries over one or down one uh, in the same way as with this insertion sort. Uh, and that's too slow. Uh, and you can easily see that in our benchmark, it's going to take quadratic time every time you get a new key. Quadratic in the number of distinct keys, because every time you get a new one, on average, you're going to have to move about half down. And you can run experiments to validate that, but we're not going to take the time to do that right now. Uh, it's, it's clear from the model. Uh, so what about linked lists? Would that work? So uh, maybe the idea is to keep the keys in order in a linked list uh, and add a value field for each node. Uh, and so that's going to be good because uh, same way as for stacks and queues, it meets the memory use performance spec. Uh, but that one's got a fatal flaw in it. So how do you do the search? Uh, with binary search, we needed that indexed access into the array. You need to be able to quickly get to the middle. How do you get to the middle of a linked list? Uh, really, the only thing you can do is search sequentially through the list uh, to, uh, to get to the middle uh, or to uh, search for any specific key. And again, uh, that's going to be too slow for huge amounts of data. Uh, pretty easy to hypothesize that the uh, our benchmarks are going to take quadratic time, and it's just not going to work for uh, millions or billions of words. And again, you can easily validate that uh, with experiments, but we won't take the time to do so. So our design challenge is to, uh, of course, we want our simple, safe, clear, and efficient client code. Uh, and we want that efficiency to mean that the symbol table is scalable, that 
uh, we can keep up with Moore's Law with a symbol table. Uh, so uh, now we're going to relax it slightly. Uh, it's really a lot to expect, to expect to get constant time, uh, running time, uh, for these kinds of operations. But we'll uh, relax it to say it's got to be at least logarithmic. Uh, so uh, th since the log of a million is 20, the log of a billion is 30, it's only a little bit more costly than uh, constant time. Uh, and that's what we're, we're going to say. If you don't have uh, that kind of performance, then you don't have uh, a symbol table. Uh, and again, we want the memory usage to be linear in the size of the collection, just as for stacks and queue when it's not empty, uh, and no limits within the code on the collection side. So that's the challenge. Uh, can we really achieve such guarantees? Uh, can we implement associative arrays with just log factor uh, extra costs? Uh, that seems to be uh, uh, quite a difficult uh, challenge. And a naive programmer might say, uh, there's no way that you can do that. You can search through a billion keys uh, just looking at uh, 30 things and allow uh, arbitrary uh, insertions. Uh, and that's what this lecture is about. Uh, yes, we can uh, achieve that guarantee, and that's what we're going to look at next.